Burberry's. So the title of today's video is Distributed Systems Why the Heck? In all honesty, I was actually making a video on CAP theorem, which is a very important theorem to remember if you are designing systems. But I realized while making that video that a lot of people might still be confused about what distributed systems really are and how did they even come into existence and what is the need for it. So in today's video, we will talk about distributed systems. Why did they even come into existence and why do we want to design distributed systems? Trust me, companies like Google, Facebook, they run on these principles. And this is what we are going to talk about today. So in today's video, I'll also talk about scaling. What do we mean by horizontal scaling? What do we mean by vertical scaling? And I'll also touch upon the idea of load balancers and where they are used. I've already made a video on how we can approach a system design problem given vague system requirements. How do we come up with the API design? And then how do we uh, come up with the low level design and then the high level design and then how we scale it up. So make sure that you watch this video. But in today's uh, video we'll talk about the need for distributed systems and then uh, what are the different terminologies used so let's start so right now you're watching this video on an electronic device either it is your laptop or your mobile phone if you are using windows i'm pretty sure that you might have seen this screen often so what is the screen so this happens when your application suddenly crashes a lot of people might tell you that this happens because you are probably running a lot of programs on the computer and there are not enough resources for uh, the applications to run on the computer. In technical terms, we call it starvation. Some people might also tell you that you have to restart your machine so that it can free up some resources and then uh, run your applications. Okay, but let's imagine that your day-to-day -day job requires you to run a lot of applications. So that means you will keep seeing the screen again and again. Then what will you do? Yes, so what you'll do is you will buy another laptop, which is more powerful. Let's say you switch from Windows to Mac, but then after some days you start seeing the screen. So the same issue is happening again. What is happening is that your computer doesn't have enough resources to run all your applications, basically to meet all your needs. Okay, so you have moved from Windows to a Mac, you have already spent a lot of money, but you are still seeing the screen. So what will you do? You will probably invest more money and uh, buy an even expensive machine. But let's imagine that even in that machine, you still see the screen. Suddenly, when you were spending money, you realized that a lot of money is being spent and maybe you can instead buy two machines, two separate laptops and run different programs on different laptops. Let's say you can play games on one laptop and do your office work on the other. And that means that you don't have to install or run all the applications in a single machine. Does that solve your problem of starvation? Yes, it does. So when you were buying more expensive machines, what you were doing is you were spending money to improve the strength of your single machine this is called as vertical scaling so vertical scaling is defined as adding more resources to your machine and making it more powerful okay now when you divided your workload into two different machines what you did was you scaled your setup horizontally this is known as horizontal scaling that is you bring more machines into your setup and you divide workloads this is known as horizontal scaling confusing is it okay so let's go to the drawing board okay so let's imagine that this guy is you and you are working on your laptop okay but what happens is that you start running a lot of programs and then your laptop crashes okay we have gone through this once so what you decide to do is you decide to buy an even larger laptop so let's say that you replace your windows laptop with the mac laptop but then your computer still crashes so what you do is 
you buy a larger Mac, but your laptop still crashes. So what you do is you buy an even larger Mac. So what you're doing is you are improving the resources of your one system. And this is exactly known as vertical scaling. So vertical scaling can be defined as improving the strength of the system which you are handling by adding more resources to it. So now let's say you have a sudden realization as to why am I spending so much money on one machine which is still crashing. Why don't I buy two different machines and run some programs on one machine and the other programs on the other machine? Okay. So, we, so you decide to replace this big one machine by two machines. So now you have two smaller machines, which are, let's assume, less expensive than one big, big machine. And you also have the freedom to run some programs on machine number one and other programs on machine number two. Let's assume you run games on machine number one and you do your office work on machine number two. So what you have done is you have distributed your one machine into two separate machines, which is actually cheaper to you and it also doesn't crash. So this process is actually known as horizontal scaling. What you're doing is you're scaling out. You are you are adding more and more machines that are separate individual machines and which which have individual resources to compute resources of memory, resources of compute, and resources of storage. So in similar fashion, you could have added more and more machines. So this process of adding more machines or scale out is known as horizontal scaling. The process of adding resources to a single machine is called vertical scaling. And that is in common language is also known as scale up. Okay, now let's get back to two machines again. If you notice, you are actually allocating jobs to each of the machines. So now you have allocated one machine for your games and the other machine for office work. Now let's assume that you get that you join an NGO and you want to keep your NGO work, which is maintaining PDFs and uh, doing a lot of presentations in one of the laptops because you just have two laptops. So you have already assigned one laptop for games, the other laptop is for office work. Where do you take this NGO stuff to which laptop? Now this decision is yours. And you can make this decision based on a number of factors with how you want to arrange your work, whether you don't want to open your office laptop in the evening and that is the time when you do your NGO work. Another reason can be that you don't want your either of the laptops to crash. Since you don't want either of your laptops to crash, you decide the laptop based on the resources it has. Let's say your office work consumes lesser resources than the laptop which has games. So your NGO work actually goes to the office work laptop. What you are doing is you are actually balancing the work between the machines. That is, you are balancing the workload that you have. And hence, you are acting as a load balancer. And your decision is based on the resources each of the computers have. So you are actually acting as a load balancer. So now when we have the basic understanding of the system, let's see how this topology translates into the real world and how big companies like Google and Facebook, they use the same topology to develop their systems. So now let's see what happens when your request reaches the google.com servers. So imagine that this is your mobile client and this is your laptop client, basically your laptop. Your requests are reaching their servers. The first line of defense is actually a layer which is known as the load balancing layer. 
below these they have a number of servers which are set up so these servers are the actual machines which fulfill your requests so as you can see below the load balancing layer there are a number of machines machine 1 machine 2 and machine 3 and these are the machines that actually fulfill fulfill your request so below this layer of machine 1 2 and 3 there is another set of layer where which i have labeled as machine 21 22 and 23 and this goes on and on so basically the summary is that the, that the workload or your requests are divided into multiple machines by a load balancer and each of the machine individually serves their own request if they are unable to do so they further divide the request into another set of machines which uh, form a layer beneath them as you can see in the diagram the results when computed are sent back to the original machine which had sent the request and which transferred the result back to your mobile or your computer this idea of dividing tasks into multiple independent machines which perform their tasks individually is known as horizontal scaling so today we saw the concept of horizontal scaling which is known as scaling out basically adding more machines more identical machines which can do their job independently we also saw the idea of vertical scaling which is scaling up that is basically adding more uh, strength to one single machine by adding more resources in terms of compute memory or disk we also saw the position of the load balancer and how it fits in both of these topologies i hope you really like the video please like share and subscribe and comment your suggestions in the comment section below next i'll be making a video on cap theorem please do subscribe so that you don't miss that